Okay, I started the recording. So, hi everyone, I would love to welcome you at our fourth uh, official meetup because I'm tired of the official meetups. Uh, uh, I'm making also some private, uh, um, you know, networking and uh, meetups or presentations uh, as well. So, thank you so much for, uh, uh, first I would love to thank for uh, the space of, uh, how should I? Uh, 18 and 19 cafe or the business center because upstairs you can find some offices that you can rent out but i think that they are already fully rented out and <laughs> and uh i want to thank for this opportunity to uh, make the meetup to organize a meetup over here because it's a really nice space here and i'm happy that we have even unexpected visitors <laughs> maybe they're just sneaking and pretending that they didn't want to come but they didn't want to come. it's fine so yeah of course I brought the flags and pins, and I'm happy for uh, carrying these uh, with the supporters. So my name is Samuela Davidova. I'm the representative of the country of Liberland, uh, or Free Republic of Liberland, to here to Georgia. I also do some presentations when I travel around the world. So now when I was in Saigon, so in uh, Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam, so I gave a presentation over there. and. Uh, it, it uh, resulted in a new resident of the country, so I'm really proud of it. And uh, yeah, beside this, I also promote individual freedom and in some other uh, speeches, I uh, promote remote work as a way to a freer life. If people can you know, implement it the right way and I show sort of like more opportunities and uh, potential that life has to offer and is often, you know, um, people are not aware of. So yeah, and uh, today I prepared uh, a topic that is more like from just the libertarian perspective. It's not directly connected to Liberland, maybe at first sight. It will be the topic of privacy and security. And I wanna, I just was posing this question like whether government that is claiming to be securing us and to ensuring our privacy is actually doing this or whether it's actually causing more problems than needed. So um, why do I cover this topic is because uh, I work in cybersecurity or I work in, uh, for an IT company uh, with more like cybersecurity perspective uh, on things we are doing, on the projects we are doing over there. So uh, I more like interconnect the dots because uh, also in the past I studied, I have a bachelor from media and communication so I was focusing on more like propagandistic uh, perspective of the government and myself I'm interested in libertarian other topics so uh, individual freedom and so on so um, uh, also it interconnects what I do in my sort of free time when I wake up I sometimes read law so today what I will cover it will just really come it's up and it's some you know fake news whatever um, scenarios possible scenarios but it will be really coming just from the laws because they can speak for, for themselves. And also we will have a special guest, Yeji, who will present uh, the new email protocol uh, because he's the founder of Liberland Software Foundation. It's a non-profit organization that is registered in Liberland. It's not like Liberland created, it's uh, despite. Uh, Yeji is also one of the co-founders of Liberland, but uh, it comes like from an independent idea of creating uh, a non-profit organization that will be developing um, open source software that will be serving people and ensuring their freedom and privacy. But he will talk about this later. So, okay, this was a brief introduction. I wanted to ask uh, Thomas if you want to say a few words about the space. Yes, I, I really, I really, I really have this sort of. Yeah, if you if you want to be here, if you want no. to be recorded, that would be great. No, no, it's okay. You don't want to. Okay, okay that's fine. Um, well, all of them they came out of this time. <laughs> to tell you a little, how long have you been here? Uh, about six weeks. Oh, six yeah. weeks. Yeah. yeah. It's so super close here, by the way. They're one block away. Really? Yeah. Nice. Uh, it's been the same music at hostel right now. Oh wow. Yeah. So uh, like one one minute that's more. Good. You intend to stay longer here? Um. Yeah. I don't have to, like a very fixed plan for like two, 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 for at least. Three to four months. Okay, so maybe yeah. longer. Yeah. So we we've started this business center since uh, last January on the eve of January, uh, and the idea of uh, 
there's more community. So we have offices and also co-working space. Okay. We do also coffee shops and uh, wine. Uh, we are in the process of uh, making uh, wine for online for distribution of boutique uh, wine collections. There's a few which we represent to uh, some winemakers. And you are free to come here and use this round for the Yeah, just our coffee is very cheap. Like this price, it's where you can have a, a working atmosphere here. And we have uh, it is amazing lemonade. <laughs> we have one bank on the third floor, and an international coffee company on the second, and we have a lot of estate, some company, uh, some visuals. Which is kind of a mix. Okay. It's a good vibe. You come in the daytime, you see a lot of people here. It's very like welcome in place. And it's super beautiful here. I like the interior. So despite yeah. it's like the underground, it still has a good light even during the day and it's like super cozy to me too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so well, much for creating this space and for enabling us to meet up over here and to share these thoughts. Okay, so let me begin. Privacy and security. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, I realize I found this meme today, so maybe you will uh, connect this to with me. Um, you could be the reason someone loses faith in the government. So, I was thinking about what do we need in life, like completely zoom out from the topic, is what do you need? So you need some, you need to make some money so that you could afford what you want, right? Uh, you want to live somewhere. Uh, you want to have some family, friends, whatever you want to socialize and have some connection, feeling of belonging, and so on. You want, what is there next? Oh, this is like safety, you know? So then you want to feel safe that uh, if you go to the street so that um, uh, no one will attack you, sort of. Uh, you want to have some laugh, you want to feel laugh, you want to feel loved, and uh, you want to, to have the opportunity to grow without being sort of restricted to self-express and so on. So this is what I do now, focus on. And you want to uh, actually, you know, allow yourself just whatever, like to get what you want uh, from the perspective, like if you want to be treated nicely or whatever, take care of yourself so that you can do this. I think this is like sort of uh, needs in 2023 of capitalistic <laughs> perspective, but there's no capitalism in reality. Okay, but like a uh, modern world, needs sort of so what we have and what government thinks that we need <laughs> so today I just opened uh, the press release section of European Union website and uh, I, I was just making screenshots of like uh, some recent press releases so um, uh, uh, so government thinks that we need to be uh, so we need to take care of uh, the artificial intelligence uh, or they se secure us from it you know uh, also, oh, this this is brilliant. So there's, uh, do you know that there's a, a community plant variety office? So there's a special governmental office that takes care of plant variety, right? That's good. So the, and they're gathering. This is what we need, right? That's good that we pay for it. Uh, also, they care about women and drugs um, because somewhat they think that it's some um, gender related. So this is what they resolve for us. We're happy. Um, uh, 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 yeah, they also formally, uh, they artificially uh, say that we will demand 15% less gas. Somehow they counted this, whatever. Um, they also sent 3.5 billion uh, euros to support small companies in the context of Russian wars against Ukraine. Uh, why is it, you may think, oh, but this is good, you know, like, let's support uh, small businesses, but this is actually causing much bigger gaps, because what happens if some businesses get subsidies, if they get money from government, is that then, instead of creating value for people, companies are focusing on um, creating a business in the, the area where they will get money for nothing. You know, like, just because you exist in a certain area, you can request some subsidies from the government, from uh, from 
especially these EU, EU funds. And so uh, what happens, you know, these, where did those uh, 3.5 billion euros just in, for France, where did they come from? So people paid them from the tax. Uh, this, this money came to some uh, bureaucrats in the EU. Like, but it, in general, it just comes to the bureaucrats. So you actually have to pay those people who sit there and who process this money. And then these bureaucrats said, oh, let's support these particular some small businesses. But if you're not from, if you're a small business that is not from this area, so then you will not get this money. And so it, it, it creates much more gap. And uh, actually people paid you for, <laughs> paid some particular businesses out of their pocket, minus bureaucrats, minus work, minus all these transfers and so on. And minus a lot of paperwork because it's a nonsense extra work that you have to create just to submit a request for these subsidies. And uh, uh, why it creates actually more gap and uh, inequality is because uh, if you create a small business, you want to provide value to people and then people pay you back for your value, right? But here, what happens is that instead of really just create, being paid for creating value, you're being paid for existence in some particular uh, in some particular field, so, um, and, but people are like paying more money, except that, uh, imagine like in Europe, if you live there, so if you're employed, 50% of your money that you make will be cut away and will be support, and these projects will be supported from your money every month, people are just not aware of it. So like when you pay taxes yourself, you realize like, oh my God, I give so much money away. So where does it go? So this is where it goes. To support some particular businesses that requested these subsidies, whatever. Um, uh, strengthening social dialogue. So this is what a uh, first day consultation of social partners on European works councils directive. Just edited it here because I have zero clue what does it mean. I read even a few lines of it and it didn't make any sense. So it's some um, strengthening social dialogue, you know, and you like with the tax you pay someone who wrote this <laughs> I think it was maybe AI generated, but whatever. Uh, and because it just, it, what does it mean? I, I cannot understand, I'm sorry. And uh, also, uh, you're paying someone who was strengthening social dialogue, you know? Like, actually, social dialogue, what other dialogue you want to have, I don't know. Okay. Um, oh, this is another one. So it's uh, um, 100 million euro for, oh, the, yeah, uh, to support. Uh, the the um, public sector bank in uh, in Italy. So when you live in Netherlands, you pay taxes to <laughs> to so that 100 million euros would go to support a public sector bank in Italy. And you would say, you know, like from a normal perspective, uh, why does the bank doesn't why why it doesn't work? You know, why some business work why should you pay for it if it doesn't work and if you're not using their services well okay so this is what just this is what we need and this is what government says that we need you know like, okay thank you thank you so much that you know better that's good and we pay you okay thank you. okay so privacy and security I don't know how much you want to interact with me but it would be great if you said something like what does the privacy mean to you what then you think like privacy, what is it for you? Speak up. Oh. Yeah, privacy um, just means that you're in control of uh, what, you, what you tell to the outside world, uh, I think. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I like this thought. I was thinking about it, um, yeah, like, uh, I, I think that it's also like if I want to be alone, just or if I want to uh, have some secret, so it will be my secret or it will be a secret with people with whom I'm. Um, uh, yeah, so that you're in control, like what, what you what you share about your life. You yeah. About your life. Yeah, that's a nice thought. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, yeah. I'm happy that someone. Yeah. So I, uh, I I googled and I was like, you know, what are some definitions? So yeah, like exactly. To be free from interference and intrusion, so that no one can like interfere with you if you don't want to, and uh, to be able to control who can see or use information about you. Okay. This was some governmental site, so. Uh, I bet this is interesting, you know, like control who can see or use information about you. Uh, well, if we actually put some information public, so I, I cannot control how someone will use it. 
it's because I already shared it, you know, so. <laughs> okay, then it's uh, secrecy, isolation, but it's like of, uh, in a way of uh, information somehow, what? And the, also I was checking because I like sometimes these, you know, origins of some words, so they are actually pretty interesting. But this also just came from a secret, solitude, privacy, like this, is, this was the same thing, or mystery even, so that like, it should be, you know, hidden, sort of. What is security to you? You want to participate? Yeah, safety. Okay, nice. Thank you so much. Good. Okay, so yeah, uh, being free from measure or threat. Okay. So what does the government does for us for our privacy and security? <laughs> It's a bit mean way of uh, presenting, right? Ah, okay. So, um, so a government does for our privacy, uh, privacy and security laws. So, what does it mean when something is uh, in the law? It means that if you do something again, so that's illegal, and it gives some sort of directions on like how you should behave in certain situations. Ah, okay. Uh, what was the result of these laws? I will show uh, examples later. So uh, the problem of these laws is that it actually makes you, you know, it gives these directions and it says which particular data should be created, which data should be secured, and in what way. But the more data you have to secure, the more insecure it is actually. If you do not have any data, you don't need to protect them. And today I will talk more about this data perspective, not like security, physical security. That's a different topic for like um, more, you know, offensive, defensive security but, uh, perspective. But yeah, so again, like the more data you have, the more data you have to take care of, the bigger the, the risk actually. This is the whole core idea. Like I will then uh, share this in like what you can do yourself on the individual level or for like how to lower the risk. But one of the ways, it's like uh, least principle, uh, like uh, uh, least access uh, sort of principle. So the, the less data you have, the uh, the better. Like, and you are you should be aware of what you are sharing, where. But the problem is that if you are creating data which lay in some databases and so on, and then they have to be set somewhere, they have to be saved. So, and then secured and monitored and whatever. So the more actually, the, the longer the data exists, the, the more insecure it is. Yeah, so the idea is, you know, like a government says we will secure your data. And we uh, also, especially like in GDPR, so you have the directness to use only necessary data for people, of people. But the problem is that all the necessary, uh, all the necessary data of uh, that, the government or the, the corporations have to use or have to work with are actually much more than necessary because they have to be compliant. So there are several exemptions. Um, so for, to be compliant from the legal perspective, for example, you have to, uh, and also it should, you should give your consent for it, <laughs> which doesn't really change uh, anything. Um, but uh, let's say when you sign a contract, so you have to uh, write there certain information and uh, but you know, like the, oh, hi, happy to see you, amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Sure, feel free to sit anywhere you want. Thank you so much. Happy to have another Christmas event. Okay, so um, uh, I'm talking about uh, the security and privacy uh, of the data from the perspective of like whether government actually helps or creates the problem. So just to summarize this slide, uh, I, I guess like the core idea uh, on the previous slides was that the more data you actually create, the more data you have, the more data you have to secure. And the problem of this, like when you have a, when you want to make a business with someone, I realized that the best way to bi make business with someone is just this. You trust the person. If you contract, but if you create this contract where you need, uh, you know, 50, 50, 50 uh, pages of a long contract that actually just creates more mistrust and then if things go wrong you go to trial and you have to also create a lot of paperwork. 
uh, do you want to make these businesses, you know? And uh, there's some particular data that you have to fill in and then they exist. And if this data exists, if this information exists, if it's captured anywhere, so the more likely it can be leaked. But I, uh, it's not just about leaking data so that they actually go in a way where you didn't want them to go. Um, and what's the problem about this is that when you have a small business, let's say a, a very small e-commerce site, and uh, you have some super simple database, this is a super easy example. Uh, you want to start selling socks, let's say you sell socks, and you have some 100 customers uh, that uh, bought your, the socks from you, you have to keep the database of all these people, you have to keep all the information, but not only the address, the name, the, uh, you know, the delivery uh, place and so on, but you also have some pay gate, which you put over there, and over there you have to keep, according to the EU law, for 10 years, you have to keep secure uh, their IP address. Where, does, where is their bank card registered? And uh, also as well as their address or phone number if these two data are not uh, in the same country. And this is because you have to pay VAT, the value added tax, accordingly to the particular country. You have to keep this information for 10 years. But you still haven't even started making profit. You just sold your first 100 socks. Amazing 100 socks. So you, maybe you covered what, you, what it costs you, right? Uh, and you covered the initial costs, like when you set up the e-commerce e site and so on. But do you really have budget for some super secure place? So it's super difficult, right? And then, of course, you, your site might not be really 100% secure because you just don't have profit yet that much. You don't have the budget for this. And uh, so what happens, the more data has to be just kept like this secure, the more data has to be kept like this safe. Of course, like they will leak. It's like the probability is super high because the site will be some simple, you know, whatever made by a friend of a friend, and it's okay because you just wanted to sell socks. But if you have to keep all this data to be compliant, you actually put people on risk. So the best way, if you want to stay, uh, have secure your data, just go to you know desert air market and buy their socks from a local granny. Yeah. So. The leakage of data is a problem, but what is worse is uh, that also governments are sharing this data between themselves. So again, the more data, the worse, if the data is also on multiple places, so the bigger the risk. If the data go in transfer somewhere automatically and so on, the bigger the risk. And usually, like from cybersecurity perspective, the most, uh, the most issues like from the cybersecurity perspective is related to uh, um, uh, educational institutions like schools, universities, and so on. And second is the government. In this fact, government uh, has to be compliant in a certain way. But what does the compliance do? So what is, what is the compliance? So you have some sort of checklist you have to go through. But that's it. It's not really secure. It's just compliant. Being compliant and secure is not the same thing. Okay. And then, of course, you have misusage of the data. I will talk about this. Okay, so how does uh, this, what I said, how does this, this is a copy paste from a Slovakian financial law about automatic uh, transfers of the, of the information about uh, people who are having some, um, uh, some bank information. So for example, if you have a bank account, uh, so uh, the, the countries and financial institutions are required to send this some particular information to uh, your financial institution in the country. It's called common reporting system. And, uh, but there, you know, so that, because, and yeah, there, there was this, uh, this law that is, uh, it has its adaptation in Slovakia. And over there, um, there are, you know, some exemptions on which data are fine to, to be kept and shared. So uh, the processing is necessary for the performance of a contract. So yeah, this is this literally means so that uh, you will submit a lot of a lot of uh, data to a bank, or and then therefore to many financial uh, and governmental institutions, because otherwise they won't, they cannot um, uh, open you a bank account because they have to be compliant with some particular law. So the more data are created, because it's a requirement 
uh, from the legislation. And uh, then, you know, it, of course, uh, also the processing is necessary, necessary to be compliant with the legal obligation to which the controller is subject. So it's like you have one institution that has to process the data to just serve you, then another institution that is controlling this so that there's some transfer of this data. And uh, you have to give consent to it. Because, and if not, you won't be served. So you either, let's say, you want to have a bank account or you cannot have a bank account, period. That's, there's no other way. Okay. So, and why would you create more data uh, uh, to secure you from? So uh, we have to, uh, why would government does it? You know, actually, like, what's the point of like, collecting all this information? So they actually are securing us. It's against the danger. Like money laundering. Do you know who, who is the biggest money launder? It's the government and child pornography. <laughs> I will show you. Uh, you will understand this uh, very shortly. But what are the risks that come from this? So there are several, and I'm sure that you can think of some others. So surveillance. Of course, like if you have a data, let's say even um, you have uh, you submitted uh, your address, your delivery address to an e-commerce site and the data leaked. I'm sure 100% that this data leaked ever, if you ever just, uh, let's say if 10 times in your life you ever order something online. So I think that it's just already somewhere out. It's like highly probable, uh, especially if on some simplified Georgian e-commerce <laughs> website, nothing against Georgian website, but it's not really secure. And of course, like then your uh, home address is leaked. Your phone number is leaked. And if you have someone who is following you, and it's not so easy, it's not so difficult to ha happen actually, and it's super annoying. Uh, so then of course this person knows where you live. And uh, what is also another possible issue is, um, and now I mean like surveys in case of following, but of course like surveys in case of, um, you know, for example, where you are going uh, when you buy some things with your card. So if you pay here, so this means maybe you're like when you're investigating something from cyber security perspective so you're investigating even uh, some patterns so uh, you can investigate data when someone was calling someone uh, someone else so then you investigate patterns oh this who is this person you maybe don't have the message but even just this pattern information can be crucial so that you would identify where the person might be at some certain place or a certain time or with whom he is meeting um, yeah, so this is like, uh, and of course then you have surveillance from the perspective of like uh, what we have in China, for example. Uh, difficulty to enter the market, this is what I mentioned uh, in relation to the small businesses. So uh, if you will have more, uh, more data and more data to be secured, the more compliant you have to be. If you want to just enter the market, if you just want to start selling these socks online, you have to be compliant with so many laws. So instead of just you know going and start selling the business and uh, sorry start selling uh, the the things you have start making the business instead of just doing this and understanding is my product meeting the requirements of people or not instead you have to think of oh my god I have to be compliant here there there I have to do everything right and you overthink you know like all this bullshit instead you would be just doing the thing and improving the product and what does it mean why does it create a difficulty to enter the market because uh if you are uh you know like really a person who just wants to start selling a first thing you have to before starting selling a thing even like on the facebook page it doesn't matter you can use already these things because you don't have resources you don't have money yet to invest and so what you have to do is you have to start selling but you cannot start selling because you're not compliant so you will first have to raise money or get subsidies despite you didn't sell the product and you don't know if the product is good you don't know if the market needs it maybe you did some market analysis okay but still like it's not really it's not the best feedback is execution so it really creates a difficulty into uh, entering the market. And why? Let's say, uh, for example, GDPR. Uh, the problem is that if you're a big corporation, so you have a full legal department. If you're a little entrepreneur, you don't have a legal department and you don't have resources, you don't have money yet 
to pay some lawyer to create you a full scale bulletproof uh, compliant, you know, like uh, set up for, for your website, for your business and so on. And it's just so difficult to implement. There are so many companies who are making this their businesses from. I was talking to one smaller entrepreneur in my country who does who runs uh, an educational business. He's an author as well. And he said that it like just he was implementing this for half of the year. The thing is that it only, you know, it, it wastes your resources, your people, instead of focusing on, again, improving the product, in, 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 in making the business, instead they're like obsessed with, okay, we have to be compliant. So it actually really creates, a, 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 uh, it's, it's a serious drug and it cost him some uh, $10,000 and he's a small entrepreneur, you know, like, okay, $10,000, whatever. But it was six months of when, uh, of course, I, I'm not counting now, uh, the lost, uh, the money that was not made by his people who were focusing on this. I'm just uh, now mentioning the the costs that were for just uh, from the legal side for external legal companies. So it's really a problem because normal people cannot do this, uh, but corporations can. Uh, lack of competition. So this is connected to this. So the uh, so the corporate will more likely be compliant, but small businesses cannot be compliant, and thus. Uh, therefore, not that many small businesses will be created. Misuse. Of course, like I already said, if someone can be following you, um, uh, someone can be abusing you, but I will talk about this. Uh, the data can be misused like against you. Um, leakage of data, I was already mentioning, but it, then you don't know what really can happen. And if you have, uh, if your data leaks, so you can really face abuse, like someone can be, again, like uh, even like, physical threats. So for example, let's take, uh, you know, they want us, uh, again, they want to secure us against uh, money laundering. So you have like some sort of transparency law and banks and so on, and you have this exchange of information. But now, um, uh, let's say for example, that uh, someone would knew that you were, uh, uh, let's say someone would knew how much money you have in your bank, which is exactly like what would happen if uh, people would, uh, if people would be sharing um, their, uh, you know, like the, their cryptocurrency wallet, uh, uh, how, how much they have on that, and what they have now, like there's there's some particular laws to just really share all this information that is being all these transfers, and so that it would be connected to your name. And if this information would be leaked, what would happen? So tomorrow morning, someone will wait. At your door, they will drug you. They will beat you. No, they won't. They won't break your uh, physical wallet for uh, uh, with your cryptocurrencies. But they will just drug you, beat you until you give them the keys. Imagine that you would be walking on the street and you would be uh, have all your money in your in your in your hands. If you will collect these data, you will exactly do this. So like. Damn it! It's really it's it's like seriously bad. Uh, loss of freedom, of course, and censorship. Yeah, this is a China thing, and not only China. Okay, rationalization. Um, you know what we do, uh, or w one of the propagandistic ways, or like what the law, what the law, what the legislation does, is that it says we have to secure you from this which you even didn't think that you actually have to be secure from. And then it creates the reasoning. And uh, one of the tactics is that the more you, uh, take care, <laughs> the more you repeat something, the more it becomes a true. So then we are like ourselves, we're like, no, we need the government because of, or we need this particular law because it helps us with something or whatever. We already rationalize it, we do not even think of it, but we just believe that it's like this because we never really thought of it. And so, if you want to be a good nation state propagator, uh, sorry, uh, propagand propagandistic, so you need to uh, really believe that everything you do makes sense and you have to make people believe, to trust to you. If people wouldn't trust you, then they wouldn't pay you, right? Uh, okay, so surveillance. This is slightly similar to what I was mentioning uh, on the last presentation, so you already heard part of it, but it's, uh, yeah, this uh, surveillance. So you have, uh, I was already mentioning class, at last meetup um, the European media law and uh, the Slovakian implementation. So what happens is that, uh, or this is a possible 
you know, consequence of the legislation. So if you will have a, a media law that is being tell, that is tell, that tells you that you have to, um, if you want to create some uh, content, let's say audiovisual or just if you want to share videos. So in order to share videos about education or whatever else, so you have to register somewhere. And uh, if you if you were here a few weeks ago, so there were massive protests that were against creating such a database of uh, companies, of nonprofits and NGOs that should just register to get, uh, you know, this, um, uh, so that they could, so that they could, uh, they, sh uh, they could um, continue in their activities. And so they were like, no, we don't want any sort of like approval so that we can create. We don't want this from the government because they understand that the possible, uh, like the possible consequence would be uh, that they couldn't create at all. They would be pursu pursued or so on. So this is very good. And I was like, wow, I don't understand. But the same legislation is not, it was not only here. This agent law is not only here. It's uh, in Europe, it's not for foreign agents. In Europe, it's for everyone if you want to create. And in Slovakia, they made some, I think you have to pay some 200 euros to get a sort of license if you create uh, an educational content or if you just spread public opinion, which can be totally anything. So if you just create videos um, and uh, if, if you want to keep creating videos, you need to get this license and this you know, approval. Uh, and uh, what would be a possible data problem here is imagine that uh, Everyone who creates videos, so it means like, of course, TikTok influencers, Instagram people, people who create videos on YouTube, but also people officially, you know, like even all the fans should, <laughs> should register. And now imagine that this database would leak. All right, all right, sure. Of course, all right. Sure, 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 see ya. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Okay, yeah. Uh, freedom of speech, of course, censorship. So, um, you know, for example, in Dubai or Qatar, you cannot uh, in Qatar you cannot use messengers, and in uh, Dubai you cannot uh, use uh, you cannot make video calls for some reason. <laughs> so it's really funny. Um, yeah, you cannot do this online, and also most of uh, the subnets of VPNs are uh, prohibited over there. So you need to, you travel over there. You need to download uh, multiple VPNs or just connect to some foreign uh, server. Uh, banking surveillance, this is this uh, CRS that I was mentioning, so actually every bank that is, under, that is in the country uh, that signs this CRS, so they are transferring uh, your uh, bank statement information to the uh, country where you pay the taxes or to your passport country, they're just required to do so, so they just exchange this. Yeah, and it's called. Uh, this is actually it's been not by it's not being created by government, but it, it's a nonprofit called uh, OECD, and it's it's called Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. So what did I? <laughs> what a beautiful word, right? Okay, then uh, surveillance against the money laundering. You know, like oh, so imagine like you know my grandpa. Why should his information of his how much money he has in the bank every year? Why should it be uh, transferred to some organ to some other? Inf how, why should it be actually shared? You know, like no need for that. I think he doesn't ask for it. He's not really doing money laundering anyway. Okay, central bank uh, digital currency. Uh, this is actually fun because Alex, who came here, so he uh, works with the government on implementing this here in Georgia. So it's really like. An interesting person. I'm really happy that he made it, I, despite it, it seems that it wasn't intentional. So this is like you know, this is like a survey thing. So there are many possible, uh, and it's not just like possible scenarios. It's like again, like securing us from, you know, things for parenting us, your government, and it is like the possible scenarios. Imagine that your government would be completely managing your expenses, the money you made. And then they could say, you know, like, oh, you know, global warming. So you can, you have some sort of these. There, there's a serious discussion on these CO2 uh, limits um, based on your, based on uh, how much you spend. And that's like, this is, this sounds like super ridiculous. But then you come and you're like, oh, they actually really want to implement some new bank card 
uh, which would be uh, like uh, CBDC based and which would actually uh, help you <laughs> to save the, uh, the to protect uh, uh, the world against the global warming, which would mean simply that you know, like you want to, you would go to a petrol station and they would be like. Sorry, sorry, no, 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 you have to go walk home because you, you exceeded your limit. And you would be like, wait, 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 I, I made this money, I made this, I, I, can I please use my money the way I want to? No, 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 you know, like, okay. Uh, and of course, uh, connected to this, what they are currently doing, uh, massively they are now implementing, uh, you know, limits for cash uh, transactions so that you couldn't pay in cash someone uh, exceeding certain limit. Haha. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, crypto asset uh, report framework. This is what I meant. So that uh, all these uh, crypto exchanges are actually uh, required to not to uh, only share the um, the amount you have on the on the account, but they are required to share all the transactions. So what you pay for and so on. Uh, limits on withdrawal, yeah, payments and cash, uh, cash transport. Actually, there's also a limit on how much cash you can have with you. And then, otherwise, they uh, if if they catch you, uh, for example, at the airport, so then they take away this cash from you, and uh, it's uh, made public. Okay, so this is my favorite uh, thing, and when I read it, I was laughing, and then I realized, damn it, so this is true. So, um, European Union is. Uh, this sounds like a presentation against European Union, but it's just it's it was not supposed to be, and just the idea is like they're a very good source of these. Uh, really like jokes that are actually real and so this is called chat control officially it's called um, uh, uh, legislation to laying down rules to prevent and combat child sexual abuse so what does it mean that you have a phone or you have some messengers and social media and these social media and messengers will be connected soon to your some sort of documents to prove your identity why because all your and already some uh, services are already doing it and this includes also the storage so if you have Google Drive or an, any other uh, storage provider so uh, all these services will be required to scan all your information all your uh, messages all your photos everything you exchange with anyone else anything you store I'm not kidding this is a law I, I can send you the slides and uh, why? <laughs> because uh, because preventing and combating uh, child sexual abuse. And I read the law. I didn't manage to read all of it because it's so long, so that you cannot read it if you have work and if you actually do something productive. Uh, so uh, I do. So so uh, sadly I couldn't read it all, but I read uh, most part of it. So what will happen? Um, this will be automatic, and they will have to keep all this information for. Uh, I think 20 months, uh, yeah. And uh, what will happen in case, let's say you would send something that could be, you know, not right. So it will automatically have to be sent to your police station, to police. So your messages, what will police guys do now? They will hire, they will be hiring soon. It's, it, this should be in place in 2024. It's like next year, that's crazy. So police will be hiring soon because they will have to have people. So you will pay more police guys if you would uh, be surprised about like rising taxes. So that might be the reason. And they will be checking the photos of you. They will be checking your uh, photos you have on storage, on your Apple Cloud. And especially if you want to send your girlfriend, you know, naked photos, please just no more naked photos, no more cloud uh, naked photos because these will be checked on the police because they will be like oh this is not a child abuse so this is super sad and this is also why I invited my today's guest who, with whom I will have a call today so the reason is like this will be it's real it's just so jokey but it's real okay so yeah they will secure us from child abuse I'm happy for it but the reality is they just want access to our messages, right? It's just an excuse. They use I don't... It's a child section as an excuse, right? Uh, that's what sure. I do. Yeah, like, of course, like, then, then this is like those, you know, what I mentioned. What are the possible consequences of this? Yeah. 
this, this is like even abuse, physical threats. It's like super crazy. So that imagine that, oh, and imagine that I don't know belief in the security of the police station system. So imagine your photos. You know, you don't want this. So yeah, uh, and uh, my friend uh, Yezi, who will be speaking today, so he proposed a solution of a de decentralized uh, messenger, and it would be also connected to um, uh, like uh, optionality of social media and other models. But he will talk about this later. And the idea is exactly this because it would be completely decentralized, so that no one can actually control it. So this is a good solution. Okay, GDPR. I, I don't know what time is it. Wait. Oh, cool. Right. Okay. Um, GDPR, uh, what GDPR does to secure people's personal data and to collect only essential information. And this essential information is getting bigger and bigger because of the legislation I was already mentioning. So yeah, uh, uh, of course, you can also say the government, thanks to implementing GDPR, uh, created new workspaces. Amazing, right? Why? Because there are even more people who are doing some nonsense work that no one needed. Imagine you wake up in the morning and you do a job that no one wants. What is it? You're creating, you're ensuring or creating compliance for companies. And your work wouldn't exist if some bureaucrat wouldn't wake up someday and would be like, we have to secure people's data. So what happens actually, the problem of this, again, like the more data are actually created, the more nonsense bureaucracy paperwork and expenses the more man days are being wasted completely. It's like just the word doesn't make any sense. It doesn't provide really value. And uh, does it secure data? No, it uh, decreases or increases the problem of like how to enter the market again, because you have to be compliant, right? If you are EU based and it's not only EU based, why even like foreign, the problem of like this EU legislation is that they actually apply to all the European citizens. So even if you are actually purchasing or anyhow working with my data because I'm a European citizen, according to the law, you are required to be compliant despite you're not in the EU. So you're an organization, you're a company here in Georgia. And instead of, you know, like just doing your business, you're like, oh, we might have some citizens who are from the EU. Like, so if, of course, like we just don't give a damn. But if we gave a damn, so actually all these organizations around the world, despite they do not have any benefit from this law, they do not, you know, they just operate on their own. They don't want to make business. Instead, they have to be compliant, officially. Yeah. So um, uh, to comply with the bureaucracy, you must start collecting personal information of people to avoid the fraud. Also, yeah, like the security fraud, right? Oh my God, it's just, um, yeah. Uh, so what can you do? Um, uh, this is a beautiful, so first you can go more anonymized. So I would recommend you just not to share the data about real data about yourself. You do not have to do. And there's a beautiful site. I will just provide you context and it's called uh, Peter Horvath. So Peter Horvath, what is this? <laughs> Wait, can I say it in English? So um, who is Peter Horvath? Peter Horvath is the most common Slovakian first and last name. And so what people did, they created this site, which is like against Serbians and so on. So for example, if you're buying something on e-commerce, you don't have to fill out your real information. The e just help companies not to store your data by not providing them your data. And if you have to, because they have to be compliant, then you do not have to always actually submit there that I'm Samuel Davidova. You can think that, um, what is the most common name here? I'm Georgi, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, or uh, I, I am Peter Horvat if I was in Slovakia, or I could create my women, uh, women, I don't know. The problem might be with the delivery. So when someone actually, sometimes you have to show your passport. I don't know how about here because they didn't care. They just gave me the delivery. But in uh, Europe, you have to get the delivery. So sometimes people are sending it to some like uh, places like shops and so on, and then they actually pick it up. Uh, so yeah, this is maybe a great idea to think about like, do when you will next time be filling out your information, do you have to submit really your data? And just please do not, uh, you have to submit your data in certain cases 
uh, related, for example, to like pop police control. So just please submit your data. That's fine, you know. Like, but um, oftentimes you do not have to submit really your data. But just don't do it. Okay. So there's this. Now you know what's the most common uh, Slovakian name. So it's Peter Horvat. It's for the males. Then. Um, Principle of least privilege. This is like a more a cybersecurity um, concept. So when you are filling out some form, you have some mandatory fields, right? Don't fill out the forms that are not mandatory. Just this is the idea. You don't have to do this. I recommend if you just hit submit, so then all those fields that are mandatory go red, and then you you can just use all the, uh, fill out all these. Um, okay, then go where you will be treated better. So this is a little problem, of course, because um, as I already mentioned, so many countries have to be actually compliant with something. Oftentimes, the government really requires you to do things even abroad and so on. And so uh, um, from the privacy and data security, uh, it's really difficult. I think that you know, cash-based societies might be good, where they just still keep uh, exchanging cash. The problem, like. There's a very good adaptation of the banking system and fintech industry in general here in Georgia. I love it completely. But the problem is exactly this, like, it can be really misused. And um, yeah, so I can see that locals do not really trust banks or trust Georgian lorry either. So, okay, that's good. But still, the, you can like pay with your bank, uh, sorry, with the card even on the local market. So, the, the adaptability here is like very, very good. It's like super high, it's much better than in Europe I'm used to. And I know that still, like if people, if, sorry, if you go outside of Belize, if you go outside of the big cities, you actually go to like really villages. So there will be people who are using like voucher, who are still like voucher based societies that are exchanging products. This is, and this is like the best because you create a value for someone and someone creates a value for you. Of course, like you may, it's, it's difficult. This is why like money was invented so that we wouldn't, uh, because you wanted apples, but your neighbor had only pears. So how could you do this, right? And instead of, um, in, in exchange for X, you know, like, so but the, the, the neighbor didn't have pears, so you need to did some other, you know, like value thing, like money to actually exchange and so that you could use, uh, use it somewhere else. But uh, when you go to really villages, so every neighbor just does something. It's much more trust-based society. Everyone aims for long-term relations because they know that if I will be good today, my neighbors will, and I, I will be able to count on my neighbors in 20 years. So this is like one much more long-term, much more community-based mindset. The mindset is totally different. But the way of like exchanging things and how to work with data, these people don't have any data. They might have a passport or residency card, but they don't have, they don't have maybe even the, 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 the bank account. They don't maybe have even that much cash because they don't, you know, they, but they have a cheese. They have things to eat. Of course, like I'm not for company modesty. I'm just like, I just want to provide some different examples to make us thought, think. Yeah, so where it can be treated better? Mm. It's your choice, you know? Just like keeping this in mind. I, I promote like going where we are treated better in general because I believe that it's just the, it's a, it's the best price for a better life to just relocating if you feel like it. Okay, share awareness, this is what I do. So I try to make people just to point out on these issues and uh, I try to make people rethink certain conditions, you can protest, which it happened here and it sort of worked despite like, uh, I, I don't know whether it will like help long term. Um, I didn't even mention elections, it's, but yeah. Uh, but I think that the idea is really do not support these laws. So um, either be non-compliant, but then what is the risk for being non-compliant? Or uh, you can go outside, you can just, you know, like if you would host, for example, your servers outside of the EU, uh, you still need some, you know, like you still might need, uh, I don't want this to keep technical, but you, you need some service to, to actually not load your, for example, website for uh, the hours, but you want to have it prompt. So this is also difficult, but 
uh, if you want to be hosting your servers in, in the country that has to be compliant, so you might not have to be compliant, right? So for example, like, can you avoid this? At what risk? At what cost? Is it worth it? What's the value of? And uh, then again, like you do not have to submit the data so that the, so that the companies wouldn't have to really actually keep them, but they are, again, they are required. So what data you have to submit and it, does it have to be really your data? Okay. Um, and because I'm here from Lebanon, so I just wanted to say that uh, we are a minarchy, so we have actually, despite we're like libertarian, so we have some very, very small uh, government that is about to really just securing the, the most necessary laws, uh, uh, sorry, rights uh, of uh, the human. So it's like a very small uh, type of government when you really just take care of safety, like from now from the physical perspective, I haven't been talking about this, and also just right, securing your rights. So for example, if someone would be entering your uh, territory so that, you know, it, no, it's your territory, so it's they are not uh, so the government would be like securing the right so that no one would be entering your space if you haven't give content to this. We have, uh, you can check our constitution on GitHub and we have, this is like right to privacy law, this is it. And I also saw that on the discussion, so one guy was like proposing that even, even because it still gives the right to, uh, to the government so that in case, for example, he someone would be uh, um, causing some murder or whatever, so they could actually hire like police or some uh, private, you know, security company to actually be go and investigate this issue. So, but then, like, can this be misused so that someone would be actually investigating you and finding you and so on? There's an interesting discussion on GitHub on this. So yeah, it's like rather again, just a thought for you to think of. And but besides this, uh, the government doesn't have any right to do surveillance of you or so on. So actually, the idea of like liberal and thing is that oh yeah, the government is transparent. So you know uh, the financial costs and so on and everything. And uh, we also do regular citizenship calls. So we are discussing with them the concept, the progress, what we are currently doing and so on. Uh, then you know we're just securing data by not creating them. So. What data do we have? We have a database of people who registered on our website. So we have some uh, mailing of uh, in the email list. I have some 700,000 of contacts. That's a lot of people, but this is secured. Like the registration process, uh, also when you're applying for residency or the citizenship. So um, this data is secured, but you know, this is right, like just the only minimum data we have to keep and otherwise, we just don't want to create any more data. Like, why would we do, do so? We have also the companies, like if you want to, you can register your company in Liberland. So one of the companies is exactly this Liberland Software Foundation, which, uh, from which uh, ESG is from, and uh, which he formed. And um, we didn't have any, you know, like public register of the companies because we were like, you know, we just are pro privacy. So if you just want to register a company in Liberland, that's fine. But, you don't have to really do this, but the, there was this idea, and so Easy was inventing this, that actually it would be great if the company wanted to, there would be a register of these Liberland-based companies who could exchange their services and uh, products or whatever they are offering to, so that you can actually register over there. But it came from the public demand, like, oh, actually I would love to market my services among other among the community, among other libertarians, among other liberal lenders. And so uh, he created, I think it's called uh, Liber, um, lib something like library or something like that. Uh, we, I don't know, okay. But uh, the idea is rather, you know, it really comes for, from, and this is this optionality of uh, libertarian philosophy, and it is, okay, I want to share exactly this data. I want to promote my company. This is the way I want to market it. It's my marketing. And I want to promote it in the like-minded community where we can discuss some alternative way of payments and so on. So it came from the public demand, but it was not like Liberland based where now, if you will search on the public service hall website, you can find my name and you can find my address. I didn't say I want this. Oh, and this is a beautiful thing. Now in the Czech Republic, 
they created a mandatory, uh, it's like uh, something like um, email, uh, but for just to communicate with the governmental services. And, uh, and it became mandatory over there. It was like, what? And you know what? So people actually really created it because they had to, right, to be compliant. And uh, they, then they submitted all this information of everyone, of their contacts, phone numbers, <laughs> emails, addresses. They submitted it to the website. And then it's public. You can just, you just know where everyone lives and their phone number, everything. And uh, then they created one press release, which is like, if people want it, so uh, they can send this request from this site and then we can delete the data. I wanted to do it, but I couldn't because I couldn't, I couldn't uh, sign in for some reason and I, I just lost the detail because I, 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 I don't use it anymore and I'm not in my country. But, so, you know, the biggest leakage of data is actually the government. I don't understand like, just how someone, you wake up in the morning and you're like, hmm, we have now information of four millions of people. Let's just submit it on our website publicly. It's, it's a joke. It's really, it, this is completely real. It's, it's just crazy. And so then, of course, small businesses have to be compliant. Otherwise, they would be facing fines of uh, dozens of thousands of uh, euros. Okay, so I hope that uh, Yeti will be the solution provider today. <laughs> so um, uh, this is Yeti uh, Krajbek, um, who will talk about uh, Liberal Lens of Growth Foundation. He founded a few months ago, and he is now working on something called New Email Protocol, because uh, Email Protocol was created some 40 uh, years ago, and it's good because it's decentralized and so on, but it's not really the best. Uh, I mean, he thought of like we could do things better, right? So he will. I will face him. And here we go. <laughs> Amazing. This is my head. We got you. Yes. Is this the video? This is you. You're on the screen. Okay. Thank you. So enjoy beauty. I, I can see you. Can we see each other? Yes, yes, yes. Everyone can see you. They're just sitting and facing the... Um, facing the screen and I have a recording here so I will go here. Thank you so much. We have here one citizen and one uh, resident came here as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, I'm sharing the screen right now. Yeah, right. Amazing. Can we see? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, um, I have prepared some presentation for you about uh, and, and of course for your audience uh, about Liberland Software Foundation, which I will start right now. So, mm -hmm. great. So, uh, 
What is it? It's actually a uh, first non-profit uh, that's been founded in Lebanon. This uh, idea came up to my mind uh, on the Lebanon uh, Christmas party uh, last year, and on the Sylvester's night, I have created this um, this non-profit. So what do we do? Uh, we develop a very innovative uh, open source software that's aimed on decentralized and uh, secure software solutions like uh, instant messaging, like social media, smart products, and so on. So this is our team. Me, obviously, uh, Sam, who is pushing things forward in, uh, on her social media. So she's the head of uh, marketing and PR. Jorge, who is a great um, UI, UX designer, and uh, Paul Batari, who is uh, also a great full, uh, full stack developer. We uh, uh, we have uh, one more uh, full stack developer uh, as well, but he didn't want to be mentioned, so we want to... I was just talking stack. about privacy, so I'm happy that he's that private. Yeah, no, you don't have to. You don't have to submit your data. <laughs> so this is the list of our projects. Um, so this is the list of our projects. Uh, but today I will be speaking only about the first one, that is a uh, NAMP new email protocol. I was mentioning this letter there uh, just shortly, so that. You actually founded this, uh, created this site where people can register their company to promote their services, right? Yeah, for sure. I will get into it. Uh, oh. It's on the last, uh, okay. it's on the last uh, uh, slide. So, uh, well, uh, the the new email protocol is uh, actually our uh, flagship project. As you may know, that uh, classic uh, email is more than uh, forty years old and it has been very little modified since mid nineties. And uh, it doesn't have those modern uh, social media and uh, instant messaging features, and it's not very secure at all. So this NAM aims to replace the, uh, the existing email protocols like SMTP or IMAP, and uh, in a, in a very modern way. So uh, NAM, uh, what is characteristic on it? Uh, it's primarily the, the new generation of, of the email and uh, it's also enhanced with the modern uh, messaging uh, and social media and, and possibly other features. Uh, it's open source and free of charge uh, from, from A to Z, uh, like protocol documentation, server, client software and other supporting utilities. Uh, it has a distributed network and it's possibly that's decentralized as well. So that means you can uh, start your own server uh, with your own domain names uh, in, in a matter of minutes and you are connected with all other NAND servers and you can send the message on other servers and its users. So it's also mo uh, modulable, uh, which means uh, like every feature um, uh, is in a separated module, so it means like messages is one module, uh, files, uh, file sending is uh, another module, and so on. Uh, so um, it's fully customizable thanks to this. Uh, it's also it, uh, it can also be enhanced by third-party modules that uh, anyone can create, uh, which makes it endless possibilities like. The so uh, you can create uh, games that you can uh, play with uh, the people uh, that you have on, on an app, like in your contacts. Uh, so if you if you uh, consider all the uh, all the characteristic uh, uh, features that are uh, that are here, so uh, like it's open source, it's it has uh, great encryption, it's uh, it has a distributed. Uh, or, and the decentralized network, and it's uh, modular. So this makes it a free speech uh, messaging and social media platform, which we really, really need uh, these days because everything is censored. Uh, so uh, it's a solution to uh, uh, avoid the proposed uh, EU chat control law 
and other regulation as well. And and the the, the next uh, step, the next uh, point is very important, and I wanted uh, to state aloud that our software, the whole name, will never be compliant with EU or local governments' regulations. Uh, well, if you want to be uh, compliant with it, you can uh, fork it, uh, fork it the whole server and client and make those um, alterations. But I think it's a very stupid idea indeed. So, uh, if you want to run your own server, it's highly recommended uh, to place, it, uh, place the server in, in some de data haven uh, because, uh, you know, uh, the data has to be secure there. Uh, and uh, also I recommend to replicate your, uh, your uh, database and the, the files uh, in other jurisdictions as well. So if, if your server will be some kind of, uh, I, I don't know, whatever can happen to it, you can, uh, you can have the, uh, the replication in other, other country as well. So, uh, sorry, may I ask, because uh, I was mentioning this and I, sure. I, I actually didn't know, like, what are some countries that you would consider a data heaven or what are the places that you would consider a data heaven? Well, actually, I don't, uh, I don't uh, know that, I researched that, but hopefully Liberland will be the, the country in the near future, hopefully. Okay, yeah, because it, it's very difficult, I think, because most uh, countries actually are running some sort of censorship, uh, either obvious or non-obvious, so, yeah, thank you, okay. Yeah, there are, um, there are many regulations in many countries, but, you know, the, that's up to what the kind of content you store on the, on the server, so, in some countries, uh, for example, mm, like, uh, what it's called, like uh, the things like when you share the mo movies and so on are legal somewhere, it's illegal I think on New Zealand uh, mm. it's still legal because as you know uh, Game.com is still there <laughs> uh, and, and he's running Mega.mz and uh, I don't know, uh, I, will, I will have to do some research about it. Okay, thank you, don't worry about this. Okay. Okay, no problem. So, uh, what will be the features uh, of the NAMP, uh, the, the, the basic features that we would like to implement it uh, on the NAMP uh, server and client as well? So, it will be uh, like classic uh, instant messaging uh, functions that are described in the first code. And um, also, uh, one unique, uh, unique thing uh, is uh, file transfer uh, that will be uh, server stored and peer-to-peer -peer as well. So uh, today's messaging software like WhatsApp, Telegram and others have this uh, problem to send like very big files like 4K movies uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to their back platforms. So peer-to-peer uh, -peer will be completely unlimited. So if you have both, both uh, both parties online, uh, people will be uh, able to, uh, to send very big files to it. Uh, the, other, um, the other features, uh, instant messaging features are quite common. Uh, maybe all, uh, that multi-part messages will be quite unique because one message can be consistent with, uh, uh, with uh, multi-part uh, uh, stuff like text and images and video uh, so you can easily create uh, newsletters inside the chat bubbles that's mm. quite unique because uh, newsletters are uh, known uh, on the uh, on the email but not on the instant messaging software so i uh, would like to have it combined like that so uh, also classic telephony like uh, encrypted voice calls and video calls and video conferences. Uh, there will also be a social media function, so you can collect your followers and you can uh, live stream or uh, send some uh, 
news uh, to them or or you can share stories like on instagram uh and this all uh, will be uh between many servers so it, it doesn't have to be on your own server only uh, you can you can uh, follow the people on other other servers uh, the NAMP uh, is using the email address format like user at domain.tld uh, still but uh, it's it's uh, full of new features like this so uh, there will be also a group where like uh, calendar sharing as you know from from Google Calendar uh, or task sharing like Trello and other stuff as well. So this is the uh, this is the very interesting part because uh, people can actually make money on them uh, if they create their own module, uh, like live streaming modules, uh, for example, where 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 people have. Uh, where influencers have their followers and uh, the followers can send uh, coins or uh, or directly crypto or, or fiat money uh, to them and, um, and you can actually earn a commission uh, the same with uh, same applies to the paid fan content where, uh, where influencers can, um, can can provide their their uh, special content to the followers and uh, pay for that. Uh, and, and I mean, I mean, followers will pay for that. And uh, you can uh, also earn a commission on it if you if you run this module. Um, there there could be e-commerce and food delivery, food delivery, which is the same thing. Uh, it's it's this, uh, it's the same thing like Burger King on Telegram. If you uh, if you know it, if not, you can find it uh, on a Telegram. It's uh, just a template for the uh, food delivery service through the chat room, where you can click how many um, how many burgers, and burgers and fries you want to order, and they will deliver to you. Yeah, let me show it. Uh, how is it, uh, is it, is it this, uh, do, uh, yeah, all the food, and here you can add, yeah, fries, coke, pizza, and pay, cheers, yeah. So here in No, this is like a simulation, but you can actually use this bot uh, for your service, from what I understood, right? Like, there are many, yeah. like, Telegram is also like very modificable, so that you have multiple bots there. Yeah, it's very. Uh, it's, yeah. You have told me about this. It's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Telegram is great in in a matter of uh, their UI and, and uh, modularity, but it's still a centralized uh, platform, uh, which is sad because because I, I think it's the most advanced uh, most advanced. Uh, on messaging software these days, mm. but whatever, net will be better. <laughs> okay, back to back to the uh, back to the uh, topic. How you can make money on it? So uh, you can actually run your, for example, your online TV or video on demand and start your streaming business. Uh, you can create a payment gateway for for like. Uh, crypto or fiat and also earn on, uh, on the uh, commission or casino games because we want to uh, stay uh, stay free and decentralized casinos are mostly in European countries it's, it's uh, really I don't know it's banned everywhere except few Scandinavian countries so we are open to this so uh, Besides the modules, you can also run your uh, own free mail or let's say free NAMP hosting, which will be like Gmail or NAMP, and you can sell ads uh, or you can uh, provide uh, to your users some uh, premium features like bigger storage where they can store their files and so on. Uh, 
uh, and you can uh, you can create your own chat bots as well. So this is how it looks like. Uh, well, actually not now because this is the previous version. Uh, on the left side, you can see the desktop version, and uh, on the right side there is a mobile version. This is uh, just the design we had, but actually we have made it uh, as a as a actual web page. So right now uh, it's work in progress version. We have to polish things a bit. But as you can see, uh, this is how it looks like it, in nice Liberlandian colors or maybe AMCAP flag colors. <laughs> and uh, you can actually type a message, blah, 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 to the people and it's there. So that's all it can do right now. Um, back to the presentation. So, uh, this is the thing you've asked before. Uh, people right now, people can pre-register their accounts uh, because I'm providing the free uh, free hosting of the of the uh, NEMP for the NEMP account uh, on uh, on the website NEMP.io, uh, where people can now only create their accounts. But in like two weeks from now, it actually will be. Uh, available uh, for testing purposes, it, it will be the preview version, and uh, you can start using it. Uh, I will, uh, if you if you fill this uh, form, I will uh, I will send you an SMS uh, when the first uh, preview version will be available, and you will be able to start using it. And. This oh, is great, and I suggest you to do it because then you can book your uh, first name on the name uh, now, as long as it's available. So maybe I should book Sam. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because there will be hundreds of millions uh, <laughs> accounts on this platform very, very soon. <laughs> well, you know, like I, I don't know. I wouldn't be laughing because Signal. It's also like having one hundred millions of people of users. You just do not really yeah, realize sure. it, it's, but it's like super big as well as other messaging platforms. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. And and by the way, we can uh, even compare it with the actual email, the old email. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess uh, old email now have something between four or five uh, billion uh, user accounts. So <laughs> so that's our goal, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, that would be beautiful. Uh, so these are the um, other projects we have there, but that's not the topic of this presentation. So I will stop here. And that's what we are looking for now. Um, so uh, we are looking for a software architect and technical writer who will be able to uh, create uh, NAMP documentations uh, for us for for other developers, uh, so so people will be able to easily adopt it uh, and create modules and other stuff on it. Uh, we are also uh, looking for uh, software developers, uh, both the back end and front end. Uh, uh, those who will be uh, able to work uh, on an AMP with our team. Uh, we are looking also for graphics designers and illustrators and 2D animators because we want to have those fancy, um, those fancy uh, animated stickers and stuff like that on a, uh, on an AMP, uh, like what Telegram have, but I want them to be even better. <laughs> Uh, we would like to have some video editor on board as well because uh, we would like to create uh, some nice uh, tutorial videos like how to how easily you can uh, start your own server or how easily uh, is, how easy it is to use the actual um, client software, etc. Uh, and we are also looking for a CFO who will take care of the finance because right now I'm paying everything from my own wallet. <laughs> so 
uh, uh, we would like to uh, have someone who can take care of finances like crowdfunding or whatever. Uh, and uh, mm, speaking of that, we are also looking for a uh, for 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 a donors uh, who can donate us uh, crypto or uh, fiat or uh, hardware like servers where we can uh, we can host uh, uh, freenam and um, for more information you can uh, find uh, find it on our website libersoft.org slash donations where we have a uh, where we have a list of the crypto we are accepting, so you can send it to us. Uh, and please, uh, if you do so, uh, send us a short email so we are aware of it, and we can say thank you for that. Uh, and we are also looking for uh, early end users that can give us a, a valuable feedback uh, and uh, and possibly uh, send us. Uh, back report if they find anything isn't working properly and uh, they uh, you can also uh, propose uh, new features or updates uh, because uh, without you uh, it, it, we are creating platform only ourselves and that's what I don't want to I want the people to like it and we need uh, a fee- feedback uh, uh, for this so uh, that's probably all from me, and I hope that this, uh, this software will have a tremendous impact on the world of uh, secure and decentralized messaging, and not just messaging, uh, so- social media as well. So uh, that's it from me, and back to you, Sam. Thank you so much, Yeti, for joining us. Uh, I want to ask if you have any questions think- related to the NAM. Uh, I would like to ask a question. Yeah. Can you hear me from here? I think I'm speaking can you, to the... Can you hear... Uh... Uh, maybe a little bit louder if possible. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I was, I'll speak a bit more to the to the microphone. No, uh, the question I have... Uh, in the, in the Recently, like the other decentralized messaging proto- protocol that was announced is called Noster. I, I, have you heard about it? I was wondering, like, what is, what is the biggest difference, for example, between a decentralized messaging service or emailing services you're offering and, for example, something like Nostra? Nostra? Well, uh, well, I, I don't know uh, about this software, but uh, I, I know that there is a similar project uh, based, on a, based on a matrix org protocol uh, with, um, with a client software called uh, Element. Uh, and the, 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 the main difference is that uh, we use the uh, a different kind of uh, identity on it uh, because for example on NAMP you have to have your old email where uh, you use it as a registration but we create registrations that's that's the that's the uh, difference and also uh, matrix doesn't have uh, the intention to create uh i i mean element doesn't have this intention to create a nice looking uh full featured uh full mm-hmm. featured uh, client software they uh they just made uh, a basic version with like basic functions like sending sending messages and small files and so on so i want to i want it to be even better than that so that that's probably the uh, the main difference, and uh, I have I have explained that um, cool. on this on this table because uh, as you can see here, um, I compared the NAMP or what it will be in future with other messaging uh, other today's messaging software. So, uh, for example. Uh, only only matrix have this um have all these uh uh characteristics like it's uh, decentralized uh, it has an end-to-end encryption and it's open source as well no other software ha- have it well well a classic email can have it but almost no one using it uh, uh 
they they don't use the end to end encrypt end to end encryption uh, while sending emails. That's very um, specific for for only for some people that are using it. And um, as you can see, it's horrible if you if you yeah. take a look at it. So WhatsApp, WhatsApp, RCS, whatever. Uh, all these software don't have the, the decentralized uh, uh, decentralized uh, structure, and end-to-end -end encryption is missing uh, in in a half of the of the uh, examples here. Mm. Uh, and also, also uh, very open uh, platforms like uh, Telegram still don't have. Uh, uh, still don't have uh, the the server uh, uh, server uh, source to be uh, open, so they they're only sharing what's inside of that client software, not on a server. So uh, that's that's uh, uh, Telegram is quite good, but you know there are much more horrible things uh, like WeChat, which is a main platform in China, which is basically surveillance tool for <laughs> on the people. So <laughs> I wouldn't really recommend it to, to even install that on your on your devices. But I know it's the uh, right now it's the only only way to connect with China. And uh, speaking of China, uh, I would like to mention that uh, NAMP might be the solution to connect with uh, with Chinese because all other other software like WhatsApp and Telegram, they are banned in China because they can they can ban it uh, easily. They have just few servers around the world, but uh, they uh, China never China has never uh, uh, never uh, blocked uh, email. Uh, you can you can still send the emails to uh, to, to Chinese. Uh, and uh, it's it, it, it is very difficult to to block all the email servers around the world because there are so many of them. But it's quite easy to to block uh, to block uh, WhatsApp or or uh, Facebook or whatever. Okay, thanks. Thank you. I, I, you know, I think I wonder about it. And this is the same like when someone says, look, there are some other projects like Liberland as well, like uh, or Free City Foundation and all these projects. And I say, you know, the idea is not like, let's create this one only solution, but even like Nostr is like the centralized Twitter, sort of. But still, the more such projects, the better. It's okay to have competition as well so that we could improve. So that we could come up with new features and the idea i think it's it's like you know like you have multiple cryptocurrencies you have multiple exchanges that are promoting it and so on the the idea is then the more people will actually adapt to it the more people will use it the more people will be familiar with it you know like uh, in five years my grandpa will come and say this is not secure you know like this is the idea so actually it points out to the current problems of other messengers that are insecure and it improves the UX and the adaptability of people for example because if you want to start Nostr so I just I just oh, I started working with it but first you have to read documentation and then you have to choose your um, how you want to connect it and so on and uh, I was like oh my god I have to now go through a technical documentation it's okay to me but Hey, grandma, grandpa, you know, like he wants to do this, I think, or it's, it's like just too much drag, too much. The bar for entering this software is just more difficult for people so that then not everyone will be using it. You don't need everyone literally, but at least like the more people will would be using more secure solutions, more pro privacy solutions, the better around the world. Just this is the, I think this is the core idea. And so uh, what I think is, as you already mentioned this so i think the idea of also of like having a better ux uh, or offering a better ux that would be easy for people to use and ju would just lower this bar to enter to enter such platforms and the more people will use it then the more people will use it it's like a uh, exponential 
uh, idea. So it's actually good to that we're not actually creating something that would be completely, you know, on a green field where you have to still explain people why they should care about their privacy, why they shouldn't share the data with centralized platforms. But this has been already done. And then just he just came up like, let's do it even better. And so this is what he's developing. And I'm super excited that you want to come up with, uh, first that you came up with this, but first you will, uh, that you will offer already in like weeks, uh, the opportunity to people to actually try this tool. And uh, I believe that once we would implement this on the market, so then the more people will come and say, hey, we also want this, 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 this is, this is what we are currently lacking. And I laugh about this like nonprofit idea, the fact that uh, we are more flexible. We do not have to just pursue, you know, some uh, like profitability goal, which is normal. And of course, like we want this to, uh, we want this to really serve people. And uh, this is one of the ways so that it can really fulfill the features people would be using. If we are capable of implementing this or people can volunteer and participate to actually create something for themselves they, they would really use. So yeah, I am sure that it really resolves the problems that I was addressing today here. And uh, if you have any other questions for Yeti or me. All right, thank you so much for coming and thank you so much Yeti for joining us. And I think I'll wrap this up. Too. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, take care. You take care too, bye bye. Yes, and uh, you know what? I have uh, this is just <laughs> LinkedIn, uh, but I just wanted to very slightly to just just to wrap this up. So this was Yeti. Oh, <laughs> just uh, George. <laughs> George, <laughs> George. <laughs> George. Yeah. Uh, this is Yeti. Oh, okay. That's Yeti. Yeti. Yeah, it's like this is a check, check, check <laughs> thing. Yeah, check letter. Uh, I will just wrap this out and finish uh, the presentation with uh, what we are currently working on in Liberland. So uh, we are very active in our diaspora village, ARC, uh, which lies in Serbia. So this is just to provide some context. This is a, a, a village that we own, uh, like a, a small uh, area, or it's not that small, but you can get accommodated over there and so on. And it's very close to the physical land of Liberland. So you can come over there. We are totally be happy to welcome you. I know that guys are now organizing some regular uh, weekend events over there. And uh, there are some cultural stuff and sports stuff and so on. It's really nice. And in summer, we are organizing their uh, Floating Man Festival and Conference where I was speaking last year and I will be going, of course, this year as well. I would love to make something like an official, um, uh, you know, like tour of people from Georgia to over there. So if you wanted to join me, it, text me. Uh, then we, of course, are working on recognition of the passport. So recently you can use our passport in Colombia. And we are, of course, like improving our diplomatic relations with other countries. This is also like my uh, aim here in the country, in Georgia. So my long-term aim is to get recognized our passports internationally. And uh, we are working on our blockchain infrastructure so that we would have our Liberland Marys in the blockchain. We are currently in the testnet phase. Uh, so if you're a citizen, you can actually uh, use it um, and test it. And uh, then we are welcoming more residents and citizens. If you want to discuss this further, if you would love to support the project, if you would love to support the idea so you can become our resident for $100, if I'm right. Um, uh, after submitting a form on our website, liberland.org, uh, or later you can become our citizen. We have around 7,000 uh, 7, uh, residents uh, around the world, and we have about 700 citizens. While some four people, some four citizens, five now, okay, <laughs> are actually in Georgia. So this is amazing to see. And as I mentioned, so we are organizing this Floating Man Festival. How <coughs> you can join? So you can uh, buy a residency or the citizenship and uh, connect with the community. Now we can join our citizenship calls. They are built weekly every uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, then you can visit uh, Liberland or Art. This is actually in Art, uh, but we keep improving the settlement over there. Uh, then you can start a company and market your services. You can have a company in Liberland. Uh, you can contact the representative. That's me in the country. 
and uh, you can help with what you know how to do so you can just email us and say like you would love to participate or whatever I will be hiring voluntarily because to me this is like not I do not have any profit from this but um, I, I want to teach I'm willing to teach someone like more marketing stuff and uh, uh, in return for like some five uh, hours weekly of effort um, yeah, uh, you, but you can also uh, contact us on the, um, you know, like international global level if you want to help out because it's an interesting uh, opportunity to learn a lot, like, and to really perform your skills uh, on the global level because it's a huge community of, as I mentioned on our e email list, we have like 700 thousands of people who registered on the website already so you know like even people for, who are coming to my meetup are not registered on the on the website so this is really exciting so there are really many people around the world and uh, you can come to our festivals and events or you can just visit us we are really happy to welcome people and we are having our tourism uh, website even uh, or you can donate and what uh, Liberland means to me and why do I uh, why have I decided to uh, you know like offer my time and effort into it. This is our flag in new economic school in Georgia. So you know, to me, uh, I really am a person who stands for freedom and I think that uh, I, I live it. And uh, Liberland really interconnects uh, people who are like-minded to me. So uh, this really, it interconnects globally a huge network of libertarians, a huge network of open-minded, pro-freedom people. Usually these people are really smart and I really met some super exciting people related to this and I think it really opened me the doors to even more such people. So it's really good to, uh, sort of community to network with. Um, the value of freedom and why uh, I would represent it because I believe that Georgia is also a very pro-freedom uh, country so people actually care when it comes to you know like cutting their freedom so they're like no 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 no. Uh, there, there's a huge amount of libertarian communities in the country, some 10, like a lot of, and uh, they have a big, big representation here, like even for Student for Liberty, for example. So they make, uh, they have dozens of, dozens of thousands of followers on uh, Facebook, you know, it's like, wow, this is crazy. So they have really big communities of libertarian communities here. Uh, like many people are supporting these efforts. And um, I think that Liberland is a great example uh, to the world that things could be done differently so that it questions the status quo, it questions the legitimacy of the state. It says, look, we can, can we be compliant with the international norms while actually creating the country uh, by libertarians and so on. Actually, the thing is that people who are around Liberland, uh, everyone to everyone, Liberland just means something different. My friend, he said that to him is uh, a PR project of freedom. But uh, again, I believe that it rather just questions the status quo, it questions the norms. And uh, I think this is the beauty of just stop and rethink the norms, rethink what we see, the way we see the world. Does it really have to be this way? Okay, uh, Liberal in Georgia. Um, uh, I have a group on Facebook so you can you can uh, join, I would be happy if you join it because I keep sharing there's my updates, like um, mainly over there. Uh, I will be giving a speech next Saturday to Ayn Rand Center here in the country and it, it starts getting pretty busy so uh, the guys just uploaded some form uh, for registration because uh, there are so many people who start like be going on Facebook and are like, oh, <laughs> there's far too many. So yeah, I will be speaking actually about um, legitimacy of the state. I will be questioning the legitimacy of the state. I will talk about concepts such as like uh, obsolete uh, concept of uh, citizenship and so on. So it will be very thought-provoking and um, anarchist actually. Yeah and also I run um, a podcast thanks to the initiative of Franklin Club. Uh, I really appreciate the guys because they enabled us to shoot uh, two seasons and the second season I dedicated to the business perspective of the country and I ha have out uh, now it's uh, five uh, episodes that are out of the of the business season because I realized when I was going to networking events that there are many interesting startups that uh, arise from here and the Georgia is uh, you know like um, 
per cryptocurrencies, per Bitcoin, and this, you know, per freedom, per decentralization, uh, the amount of projects here is just huge. And so I was like, damn, people are actually, some people abroad are actually interested like in local business scene or can they invest? What are some interesting projects here? How does it work here? Or if you relocate here, how does it feel to relocate here? How's the integration in the country? So I talked to some interesting people from the business, some locals, some foreigners, some locals who lived, or most of the locals with whom I was making the interview actually lived abroad for a while. So it was a good to bring Georgia into a wider perspective and I would love to bring Georgia into more awareness on the international level as well. So this is what I did. And you can watch this on YouTube. I will distribute it shorter later uh, on other platforms as well. Uh, yeah, and you can stay in touch with me. So I have Facebook, I have LinkedIn, where I'm very active and I talk more about uh, remote work and individual freedom in general, but like more uh, applicable to the you know work life because of course LinkedIn is more like professional, serious uh, social network. Uh, I run my blog where I write also like individual freedom but it's more like applicable philosophy i would say uh you can follow me on instagram where i post photos because it's that's what instagram is for yeah i usually have this link of uh, sam remote girl and you can also find me under sam remote girl on twitter recently so i shared there my random thoughts i have an email uh and also for georgia and uh, you can watch some of the interviews with me. I talked about uh, Liberland and about Georgia with Adam from Canada. So we had um, uh, an interview together. And yeah, as I already mentioned, you can of course follow my podcast on uh, YouTube. And I hope you like it. And I think that's it. Okay, yeah. That's it for today. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. <laughs>